Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. My name is Tom with LearnPythonTutorial.com and today I'm going to show you how to access a website and figure out what type of programming language the website uses and if they're using a framework. Frameworks. Uh, <clears throat> a user, uh, one of our users, Mike, sent me an email last week and asked if it's possible to build a piece of software in Python that would allow him to access websites and see what kind of uh, programming languages and if they're using frameworks. Uh, yes, it is possible. Um, and he also said he's using Python 2. So if you've been following along our tutorials, we've been using Python 3. And I do apologize, but uh, Mike asked if we do it in Python 2. So um, we'll go ahead and write uh, some code here in Python 2 to show uh, Mike how to access a website and grab some information from it. Um, now, I'm not going to write the whole web scraping um, software here. Uh, I'm pretty beat up uh, with selling my house and stuff. So we're going to use one that's already built. And uh, hopefully in a couple weeks here, I'll write a uh, web scraping software to show you guys how to do that. But uh, for now, we're going to use one that's on PyPy. And it's called Built With. So we got to get that installed on our machine. I don't know if I ever installed this, but uh, pip install built with hit return I'll see if I had it installed if I had it installed it'll say it's already installed if not yeah mine's already has one installed uh, otherwise yours is going to download and install it in your um, site packages here all right um, so all right once you get that download installed let's go ahead and, and open up a New file, so command new. I'm in Sublime Text. You can use whatever uh, text editor you prefer. I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it webcheck.py. All right, so we installed um, a software package called Built With. So we got to be able to access that from our, our uh, Python file here. So we'll do import Built With. All right, so now we're able to access software package that we downloaded and use some of the code that it has in there. Now, built with, will go and grab information off a website and return it to us. So we got to tell it to do that. So we're gonna save um, that or not or have a variable represent the information that built with grabs for us. So website's gonna be our variable here and then we're going to say hey go to built with and inside built with run a function called parse and parse takes an argument of the website we want to visit so we're going to do http colon backslash backslash learn python tutorial dot com so we'll go to my website and grab the information off there and we'll print it back and we'll print website. For you users that have been following along with Python 3, you might notice that print is different in Python 2, where we don't need the parentheses around print. All right. So go ahead and open up your terminal again. Make sure you're in the proper directory, which I am, where you saved your Python file. And we're going to type in Python. And we're going to say, hey, Python, run our code. And we're going to say web check. .py. Hit return, and it's going to rub, run that. It's going to go out to learnpythontutorial.com and grab its information. And as you can see, it returns to us a dictionary. A dictionary contains a lot of information. So here's a key, here's a value, here's another key, here's another value, and it gives us, you know, the information that it uses. It says PHP and WordPress, uh, web server is Apache. JavaScript frameworks, jQuery. All right, pretty cool, right? It went and grabbed all that information for us. But this is pretty ugly, and our our little software, our little program here isn't very dynamic because our uh, Mike, who asked us if we could do this, would have to come in every time he wants to check a different website and change the URL here. So I want to make it a little bit more dynamic for him, so he doesn't have to constantly come in here and change the URL here will allow him, let's uh, give him the ability to change the URL in the terminal. So we'll do uh, 
we need a variable to represent what Mike would enter. So uh, URL will be our variable, and we're going to assign that to what Mike enters. So raw input, oops, underscore input. And this is a Python 2 uh, specific code as well. And we'll ask Mike to enter URL. So we'll say enter URL. I'll put a colon. Save that. Now, in the terminal, enter URL is going to pop up, and Mike will enter URL, and URL is going to represent whatever Mike entered. All right. <clears throat> now, like I said down here, parse takes a argument of a URL, so we want to put URL in here. So, whatever Mike enters into the terminal, it will kick back uh, so parse can find it go find the website so there we go let's try this now go back into the terminal run the same program again and it says enter URL so we'll do HTTP colon backslash backslash learn Python tutorial dot com and it should return the same thing we got before. Sweet. So that part worked. We made it more dynamic. But we still have this ugliness right here. And um, I'm guessing Mike doesn't want to stare at ugliness all the time. So let's make this a little bit cleaner and easier to read. Uh, so we're, we're going to want to iterate, which means go through each uh, key and value here and print them on a new line so we'll use a for loop so we'll get rid of print website here we'll do for key and value uh, in website dot iter items which is a building function so um, it's going to iterate through the items uh, let's see we'll print key and value we'll save that and run it and see what happens enter your URL learn python tutorial.com and I'm just going to copy this so next time we run it I'll type it out hit return alright that looks a little bit better here is now our code and as you can see, we got rid of the dictionary, which is good, but we still have the list. And the lists are pretty ugly as well. And it's kind of hard to decipher what's the key and what's the value. So let's fix that first. Um, let's concatenate a colon on the end. So we'll do a string and then a colon. So we're concatenating that. Let's save that and let's run our program again. See what happens here. Enter URL. I'll just paste mine in there. All right, so you see we added a colon box. Now it's easier to see where the key is versus the value. Now let's clean up this value because um, that's pretty ugly as well. So. And my fat fingers hit the pause button, so I forgot where I was at. All right, so I didn't even realize the video paused. I kept talking. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to clean up the, the values here in the dictionary. So let's go, and um, to do this, we're going to do another string with a comma. So we want to comma separate uh, our values. We're going to do period. We're going to do join. I'm not join join and save turn and enter URL hit return and there you go we got a comma separated and we got our keys separated so there you go that's Mike can now access websites so uh that's a pretty sh short tutorial on how to do that. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on YouTube or on our website. Uh, 
Otherwise, uh, I'll build a web scraping one next week. I'll see you guys then.